Hello everyone, I'm Steve Hudson and I'd like to welcome you to this edition of the Tying Bench. Just a few yards behind me flows the Chattahoochee Tailwater, a world-class trout fishery near Atlanta where I live. This is the place where I first encountered the fly we're going to tie today, the Chubby Chernobyl. The Chubby Chernobyl is a high visibility version of the story Chernobyl Ant. Fly tires found that they could add a wing to the fly using some sort of bright antron type yarn and the result was a fly called the Chubby Chernobyl, a fly that floats well and it's easy to see. It's an excellent fly to use as a top fly in a dry dropper rig or you can fish it by itself as a large terrestrial, perhaps a grasshopper or a moth or a cicada that has fallen into the water. This makes it doubly effective. You can use it for trout or for bass and panfish. It's one of my favorites and I think you will enjoy it too. So without further ado, let's take a look at what goes into tying the Chubby Chernobyl. The high floating and highly visible Chubby Chernobyl is really an easy fly to tie. Let's take a look at the key elements that go into creating this innovative pattern. Though chubby Chernobyls can be tied as small as size 14, or some say even 16, most tires use size 8 or size 10 3XL hooks. You can use either a dry fly hook or a nymph hook. The fly floats well enough to support either one. Tie this fly with 3 alt or 6 alt thread. Black thread works fine, or you can match the color of the dubbed underbody. The tail of the fly is made from five or six strands of flash material tied in, folded over, and secured to the hook. The fly's underbody is made by wrapping dubbed thread from the bin to near the eye. The foam portion of the fly's body is made from a piece of 2 mm or 3 mm thick craft foam. Color choice is pretty much up to you, but I like a light color because that does make it easier to see. The legs can be fabricated from almost any stranded leg material. Silicone legs work well, so do elastic legs. Use your favorite. The key to the Chubby Chernobyl's visibility is its yarn wings, created using Antron yarn, tied in, folded over, and secured. Pick a color that you can see well on the water. Here's the complete materials list for tying the Chubby Chernobyl. Take a few minutes to round up what you need, and then we'll go over to the tying bench and see how easy it is to tie this highly effective pattern. The Chubby Chernobyl is usually tied on a size 8 or size 10 3XL hook. Either a dry fly hook or a nymph hook can be used. After placing the hook in your vise, start your thread about an eye diameter back from the back of the eye and then wind toward the bend. Notice the tight tag end technique here where the thread is allowed to slide off the tight tag end packing each turn next to the one before it and giving you a very smooth thread base. Continue wrapping until your thread is about even with the point of the hook. Then use your tying scissors to cut off the tag end. Now we're ready to add the tail to the Chubby Chernobyl. We'll use five or six strands of flash material, such as crystal flash, with the strands about six inches long. We'll fold the strands around the thread by their midpoint. Then grab the two free ends of the strand bundles, lift your thread, and slide the flash material down to the hook shank. At that point, 
make several wraps of thread over the fold to give you a tough and durable connection that will hold the tail in place. We might as well go ahead and trim the tail. I like to trim the tail on my chubby Chernobyls to a length of about one and a half times the gape of the hook. The dubbed underbody is an important part of the chubby Chernobyl and dubbing wax is an important part of making that body easy to tie. Particularly with coarser blends of dubbing, the wax goes a long way toward helping the dubbing stick to the thread. After you've applied some wax to your thread, select a dubbing blend, here one of the sparkly ice dubbing blends, and spread a bit of it out along a couple of inches of thread. Then roll the dubbing to form a dubbing noodle. After you have the noodle to your liking, use your fingers to slide the noodle up to the hook. At that point, you're ready to begin wrapping. When you start to wrap the dubbed underbody, make sure that the first turn or two covers up the back of the thread base. Then, continue wrapping toward the front of the hook, wrapping the dubbed thread until you run out of dubbing. At that point, you're going to need to add some more. Easy to do. Just grab your package of dubbing, pinch out a little more, apply it to the thread, and continue wrapping. I like to dub about two inches of thread at a time for easy handling. And once I have some more dubbing on my thread, then it's back to wrapping toward the eye of the hook. Eventually, you'll reach the back of the eye of the hook. Stop about one eye diameter from the eye, and then continue wrapping, but this time toward the rear of the hook. Adding more dubbing is needed, and wrapping this layer of dub thread on top of the one that you've just created. As you did before, continue adding dubbing to your thread, and wrapping toward the rear of the hook. You'll notice that the body is getting a distinctly thick appearance. It is, after all, a chubby Chernobyl. And wrap back to the point where the body started. Then wrap forward again and stop when your thread is even with the point of the hook. Finally, remove any excess dubbing from your thread. With the dubbed underbody complete, you're ready to create the foam portion of the fly. Cut a strip of 2mm or 3mm thick craft foam in your favorite color, I like green, so that its width is about equal to the gape of the hook. Once the strip is prepared, use your tying scissors to trim the corners of what will become the back end of the strip, giving it a sort of taper. Now you're ready to tie the foam strip to the top of the fly. Position it so that the end of the tapered end of the strip is about halfway down the length of the tail. Hold it in position with your right hand, then swap hands and hold it with your other hand, folding the foam around the hook. Now make one snug wrap completely around the hook, tightening by tugging upwards, and then add several more tight thread wraps to secure the piece of foam to the top of the fly. If necessary, nudge the foam strip into its final position, and at that point you're ready to tie in the first legs and wing. There are many ways to add legs to a fly. The one we're going to use uses a single strand of leg material to create one pair of legs on each side of the fly. 
fold the material into a loop like this, and then position the loop on top of the foam strip on top of the fly. Position it so that the loop extends a little ways beyond the front of the eye of the hook. Now, take your thread and use two, not three, but two, just snug wraps to secure the loop into place. You don't want these wraps to be too tight because you want the leg material to be able to move under those wraps so that you can finally position each set of legs. It's simple to position those legs. Simply grab the strands of leg material on each side of the fly, tugging them out to the side. I start on the near side and then go to the back side and tug the rear set of legs into position. Don't worry about fine tuning the position. We'll do that later on in the tying process. Now you're ready to create the rear wing using about a four inch piece of some sort of polypropylene yarn. I like white or yellow, as those are colors that I can see well on the water, but your color choice may be different. After cutting the yarn, position it on top of the fly, on top of the foam, and secure it with several tight wraps of thread. As you make these thread wraps, be especially careful to be sure that they go between the legs on the far and near side of the fly. You may need to adjust the legs a little as you go because things can get kind of tangled up at this point. But after you've made several good wraps, the wing will be secured. To complete the wing, we're going to fold the front part back and then tie down the fold with several turns of dubbed thread. Apply more body dubbing to your thread, twisting it more tightly than you did when dubbing thread to form the body. Then pull the forward portion of the wing back and wrap over the fold with several tight turns of the dubbed thread. That will effectively prop that wing rearward and give you a great look in the finished fly. At this point, Go ahead and trim the two portions of the wing so that they're even. You can also blend the fibers using a comb or a dubbing needle, or you can do that later if you prefer. Now we're ready to continue working forward, and to do so we'll want to add some more dubbing to the thread and add one more layer to the body of the fly. Apply the dubbing, just as you did when doing the first portion of the underbody. Then, pull the foam strip and the legs back and out of the way and wrap that dubbed thread forward. Your goal is a point about two eye diameters back from the back of the eye of the hook. So continue to add dubbing and continue to wrap forward until you reach that point. At this point in the process, I'm careful to dub no more than about two inches of thread at a time, and I'll probably have to reapply dubbing several times as I approach my target zone. Keep dubbing and keep wrapping until you reach the target, and once you're there, strip off the excess dubbing to get ready for the next step. At this point, you're ready to tie in the front legs and the front wing. We'll use exactly the same process that we used to tie in the rear legs and wing. First, make several turns around the foam to secure it near the eye of the hook. Adjust the position if necessary. From the top, it should look something like this. Now we'll add the front legs to the fly 
again using the same technique as before. Form a loop in a single strand of material and tie it to the top with two snug turns of thread. Then position the legs on the near and far side of the fly. Now we'll add the front wing again using the same technique that we did before. Start with about a four inch piece of yarn, position the midpoint of the yarn over the tie-in point and secure it to the top of the fly. From the top, it will look like this. Now you're ready to fold back the forward portion of the wing and secure it in place. Again, add dubbing to your thread, rolling it fairly tightly. Now fold the wing back and wrap over the fold with several tight turns of the dubbed thread. To finish the fly, pull the foam in the front legs back and perhaps add another turn or two of dubbed thread. Now use your non-bobbin hand to sweep everything back and then form a neat thread head. At that point, tie off your thread. Here, I'm using a couple of two turn half hitches to secure everything, but a whip finish would work just as well. Either one is a good choice on this fly. Now, use your tying scissors to trim away the excess tying thread. Finally, trim any excess wing material if you haven't already done so. That completes the tying part of your chubby Chernobyl. At this point, the tying is complete, but there's still some trim work to do. The first thing I'll do is to cut the foam strip straight across so it extends just a little beyond the eye of the hook. I may also take my scissors and round the corners slightly. I like the look that that gives the finished fly, though I find that I use both styles on the water. You'll also want to trim the two loops of leg material, something we've saved to the end so there are a few less legs to worry about while we tie. Trimming those loops is as simple as catching them with the scissors, stretching the loop, and then making the cut. The next step is to trim the legs to the desired length. You can pull all of the legs downward and trim them at once and get close but odds are you're going to want to do some final trimming. You'll also want to do some final positioning of each set of legs just by tugging them into place. The very last tying step is to add a drop of head cement. I put a drop on the top of the fly, on the top of the thread head, and then I turn the fly upside down and put another small drop on the bottom of the thread head. When the cement dries, your fly is ready for the water. Congratulations! You've just tied the Chubby Chernobyl. The Chubby Chernobyl, as we've just tied it, is the configuration that many anglers prefer. But there are several modifications you can make, and one has to do with how the wings are trimmed. One option is to trim both wings straight across with a single cut so that they're flat. Another option is to trim individual wings at an angle, giving you a sawtooth look. You can also modify the look of the body of the fly. I think it looks pretty good just like we tied it, but if I want it even buggier, a few strokes from a stiff wire dubbing brush will pull out some of those fibers and give the fly more of that bugginess that seems so appealing to the fish. I'll often do this on flies that I plan to fish by themselves 
as standalone imitations of a big grasshopper or some other large insect. One of the great things about the Chubby Chernobyl is its versatility. You can use it as the top fly in a dry dropper rig, and its highly visible, high-floating nature makes it perfect for that application. It does an excellent job of telling me when a fish picks up my subsurface offering, but it's not unusual to be surprised by a topwater strike as a trout comes out of nowhere to hammer the topwater fly. The same technique works in warm water for bass or brim, although there I'll make the dropper something a little bigger, perhaps a woolly bugger or a large soft tackle. I can also fish the chubby Chernobyl by itself, imitating a grasshopper or other insect that's fallen into the water. Its nature makes it very appealing to fish and to fishermen alike, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy tying and fishing it as much as I do. Well, that's about it for this edition of The Tying Bench. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll check out our website at flykits.net and check out the fly tying kits and fly fishing and tying books that you'll find there. Till next time, I'm Steve Hudson, and I'll see you on the water. Take care.